All right, so next what we're going to do uh, is we're going to jump into using the power series method to solve um, some other differential equations. And uh, what I, I just want to give you an idea of what we're going to be up against um, in the types of problems that we're going to try and solve. So let's say I want to solve, I want to just pick a really simple one to start with, xy prime plus y. Uh, equals zero. In fact, this is a separable differential equation. There should be no problem with actually solving this differential equation. I just want to explain the problem of what's going to happen. Um, so let's say that y has a power series uh, centered at uh, x. In fact, let's make this, uh, just to make this just a little bit worse, uh, let's make this x cubed y prime plus y equals zero um, for reasons that I'll uh, explain shortly. Um, and so let's say y is a power series, so c sub n x to the n, n goes from 0 to infinity. And uh, that means that y prime is going to be the usual n equals 1 to infinity, n c sub n x to the n minus 1. And when we plug everything in, what's going to happen uh, is we're going to have what? We're going to have, uh, let's see what's going to happen. We're going to get that. Uh, x cubed times y prime, so that's the sum starting from 1 to infinity, n c sub n x to the minus 1, plus y, which is the sum from 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n, is equal to 0. And uh, let's just box off our previous work there. And so that means that we're going to have the sum, sum goes from 1 to infinity, n c sub n x to the n plus 2, just moving the x cubed in. The right side I'm not going to mess with. This is the sum from 0 to infinity. c sub n x to the n equals uh, 0. All right. And so uh, next what we're going to do, um, so next what we're going to do is let's uh, do all the usual power series stuff. We notice that this sum starts at n equals 1. So that means that the smallest term is going to be x cubed. This sum starts at n equals 0. So the smallest term is going to be 0. So let's uh, peel off the uh, term, um, yeah, so let's peel off the, the constant linear and quadratic term from that sum. Um, and so just to help us do this, I'm just going to switch uh, the order that we write these in. But that sum from n equals 0 to infinity is going to be c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared plus the rest of the sum. So the sum from 3 to infinity, n uh, times c sub n, n times uh, c sub n. Um, no, uh, that's why I'm pausing here. Uh, that was, that's not right. This, is, um, this sum is just going to be c sub n, x to the n. There we go, much better. And then the other series... It's going to be the sum from 1 to infinity, n, c sub n, x to the m plus 2. And then we'll do all the usual, um, well, we have one more step. So, uh, so our next step is uh, to manipulate that second sum. So let's copy down the first part. Okay, c sub n, x to the n. So that's just y, but just I've written out the first three terms, then the rest is a series. And then uh, if we look at the sum from 1 to infinity, we want to start this at n equals 3. Uh, let's think about what that means. What we're going to have to do if I want to increase the index um, to 3 is uh, just think about what our terms would be here. So if this is n, uh, then when n is equal to 1, this should be 1. So I need to think about what is n going to be here. So the, uh, or what is our term going to be here? So that when we plug in 3, we get 1. Uh, and so that's going to be n minus 2, c sub n minus 2, x to the n equals 0. And on the right-hand side, again, you can think of this as uh, uh, 0, or you could think about this as 0 times x to the n, as n goes uh, from 0 to infinity. And so what's going to happen is uh, let's just think about how this will all work. We're going to get, um, let's see, we're going to get what? On the left side, we know that C0, C1, and C2 are all 0. Okay, We get that just by comparing 
these terms to the first two terms there. And uh, in other words, the zero, this is really silly to write, but this is zero plus zero x plus zero x squared plus zero times x cubed, uh, or zero times x, the n is n goes from three to infinity, right? So we know that uh, c0, c1, c2 are all zero. And uh, then we're going to combine the other two sums uh, on the right to see that c sub n plus n minus 2 c sub n uh, is going to be equal to 0. And that's going to be true uh, for all n. So it's going to hold for all n greater than or equal to 3. Okay? And so what does that mean? That means that um, c3 plus... So if n is equal to 3, we get that c3 plus c3 is 0. Okay, so c3 is 0. And if n is equal to 4, we get c4 plus 2c4 is 0. So that means c4 is 0, and c5 is 0, and c6 is 0. So it looks like our solution that we're going to get is when everything is 0. So 0 plus 0x zero plus 0x zero squared. Uh, and if we scroll back up, everything is fine. This is a solution. The problem is that it's a bad solution, right? This is not a good solution for us. Um, when I say bad, what I mean is not helpful. This does not solve the differential equation in any way. I mean, we know that y equals 0 is a solution. Great. That's really all that this tells us. So what went wrong? What's our problem? It turns out the problem was actually this. It turns out our problem was assuming that we could write y as a power series. And so what I want to do is I want to take our power series, and we're just going to rewrite that. So rather than write, so let's just start again here. So rather than write uh, x cubed y, oops. Rather than write x cubed y prime plus y equals 0, we could write our power series, or we could write our differential equation, rather, as y prime plus 1 over x cubed y equals 0. And now, hopefully it's clear, if I say that y has a power series centered at 0, that's going to be a problem. Because if it, the power series is centered at 0, that means that in some interval around 0, our power series is going to um, approximate our function. The problem is that our function uh, isn't going to be well behaved at 0. Okay, So we have this problem where we have a function who does not have a power series there. And there's lots of functions that don't have power series at particular values. Um, there's... Um, Again, some kind of more complicated examples, but really, if you just think of something as simple as sine of 1 over x, you cannot write this as a power series centered at 0. It just doesn't make any sense to write that as a power series centered at 0. Now, it does make sense. You can write it as a power series centered anywhere else, because the only problem is at 0. Uh, so you could write this as, uh, say, a power series centered at pi, that's perfectly fine, okay? But you can't write it as a power series centered at zero. So uh, we would say that the terminology that we use is that sine of uh, 1 over x is not analytic at x equals zero, okay? That's what we would say. The word analytic here just means we can write a function is analytic if you can write it as a power series, okay? And so uh, that's the issue that we're going to contend with here. So just a few more definitions, and then in the next video, we'll go through and we'll talk about how to solve these types of differential equations using the power series method. Uh, or we'll at least talk about what are the types of differential equations that you can solve using the power series method. And there's some powerful theorems that are going to help us. Uh, but... Um, before we do that again, I just want to uh, emphasize just a little bit of terminology here. Um, and so we're going to say, uh, really what we're going to do is we're going to study. We've basically said everything we can say about first order 
differential equations. We know how to solve most of them. Um, like there's a big class of differential equations that we can solve. So really we're going to be worried about solving second order differential equations. So things of the form y double prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x uh, times y equals zero. Okay, so really this is going to be the object that we're going to study in this uh, section or in these uh, couple sections. Uh, and given this differential equation, we say that, let's call this differential equation star. Uh, so we're going to say that the point x equals x naught is what's called an ordinary point. It's just an ordinary point of this differential equation star if p of x and q of x, uh, so if p and q uh, are analytic, in other words, if they have power series at x equals x naught. And uh, ordinary points, it turns out, work perfectly well with um, Ordinary points work perfectly well with the power series method. We don't have to do anything special at all. Uh, we can just assume that we have a power series, um, and then we can go to work like we've been doing so far. So all of the differential equations that we've been studying so far have been ordinary, uh, at the, well, have had x equals 0 as an ordinary point. Um, so that means that all the power series centered at 0 behave perfectly nicely, um, and so on. Okay, so those are called ordinary points. Those are the ones that play nicely with power series. Okay, so that's ordinary points. Um, in contrast, um, if, if x equals x naught is not an ordinary point of our differential equation star, uh, we call it we say that x equals x naught is a singular point, okay? So really the problem uh, that we were having before is that when you look at x cubed y prime plus y equals zero, um, if you look at x equals zero, that's a singular point, okay? So that's a singular point uh, of that differential equation. Okay, so that's why the power series method didn't work. Now, there's a little caveat that I want to explain here. Um, one last definition. Uh, so one last definition. A singular point, uh, x equals x naught. It turns out some singular points still work well with the power series method. Um, and so that's what I want to explain now. So a singular point x equals x naught is called a regular point. So remember that this is a singular point. I should just add, this is a singular point um, of the differential equation y double prime plus p of x y prime plus q of x y equals zero. That's the differential equation that we started with. Okay, um, But a singular point of that differential equation uh, is called an ordinary point. So it's called a, uh, I'm sorry, an ordinary point. It's called a uh, backup. So a singular point is called a uh, regular if x minus x naught times p of x and x minus x naught squared q of x are analytic. So if they are analytic at x equals x naught. Okay, so if they're singular points, they're still sometimes okay. Um, and uh, these are the, the regular singular points. So it turns out for regular singular points, we're going to have a method that will help us solve these differential equations. Um, just to give us an idea, I want to look at just one more example. Uh, if we were to look at, say, uh, x, y double prime, plus 4y, uh, plus 4y prime, plus y equals 0. Um, it's clear that x equals 0 is a singular point. 
because you could write this as y double prime plus 4 over x, y prime plus 1 over x, y. You have the same power series problems that we had before. Um, but it turns out that x equals 0 is singular, but it's also regular. And it's regular uh, because um, if I look at, so my p of x is 4 over x, and uh, our q of x is 1 over x. And so if I look at p of x times x, right, our, we're looking at x minus our value times p, our x value is 0. So if I look at x times p of x, that's just going to be 4. And of course, this is a constant function. This is analytic at 0. It's got a boring power series. The power series is literally 4 plus 0x plus 0x squared plus 0x cubed and so on. It's just 4. But it is analytic. Likewise, x squared times q of x is x, right? Because it's 1 over x times x squared. That's also analytic at 0. So this is actually a differential equation that we could solve using the power series method, even though we have this stubborn uh, singular point. Okay, so more uh, in the next.